In this problem, we are going to find out what is the through dip of a planar feature using two apparent dips on that plane. So based on definition, you know that if we have a plane like that, all right, so you can uh, draw a dip just perpendicular to the strike. And this is indeed is true dip, but you can draw as many as you want in different directions and you can call them as a apparent dip, right? This is the apparent dip. So if we know two orientation of these apparent dip, we can find out the through dip. There is no difference if you have this one and this one here or another two like this one and that one, all right, still it's gonna work. So we are interested to find the through dip of a fault plane and uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna plot the apparent dips and find out the uh, through dip. So again, um, uh, on added, uh, which means on a uh, passage into the underground mine, let's say uh, this is it, uh, here in one side of the tunnel, you have, uh, you know, part of the fault plane that exposed, because it's small, you are not able to um, know the orientation of the fault plane, right? But whatever you get here, you can measure it, um, this fault plane, uh, you can measure this fault plane, and um, you can assume that is the apparent dip. However, if it's through dip, then, uh, you know, the through dip itself, it can be one of the apparent dips, right? But it's just 90 degrees to the strike. So what we are actually going to do, we are assuming whatever you measure here, right? That's the apparent dip. On the other side of the tunnel, or a little bit to, uh, inside the tunnel, you have another plane that seems the same plane, and you do the measurement there as well, right? This is my, this is my first measurement, right? And this is my second measurement. So I will assume both of them are apparent and then plot on Stereonet and find out what is the through dip. Let's move on to the Stereonet and see how we can work on this. All right, uh, we have two apparent dips that I have it here, 14 slash N90 West and 25 slash S11 East. As you know, apparent dips itself, okay, it's a linear feature. So you actually reading the attitude of the plane along single line, all right, and that is going to end up to be a point on a stereo net. So the numbers that are given here indeed is plunge and the trend. All right, let's place it here and always is like that, right? This is the plunge and this is the trend. Okay, and this format that is given, okay, it's the format of the trend, right? The letter. Um, number and letter. Okay, let's plot these two um, because I don't really need to distinguish. That's why I'm showing with the same color. So the first one, the trend is N90 West, which actually here, and then 14 degrees. So from North 90 West, you go 14 degrees towards the center. So if I count 14 degrees, that's going to be the point that is given here. Next one is south 11 east. From south you go 11 degrees towards east. This is the trend, right? And I need go I need to go 25 degrees towards the center. So for doing that, I'm going to place this one along the west east line and then count 
25 degrees and then put the dots there all right this is the second one all right so i have one apparent dip here one there so the okay the solution here is it's very simple um as we know all the apparent dips are gonna be on the on one plane so what you need to do is you need to place these two dots along one great circle and when you do that you can trace that great circle and that's going to be the plane that these two are sitting on that so if you read the strike and the dip of that plane then you answer the question so let's do that i'm going to show it with the black so what i'm going to do i'm going to rotate my veil and paper either this side or this side it doesn't matter it's the same thing so because we are using the stereo unit as a ruler so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to place these two along one great circle so now i'm very close right this is the great circle this dot is in this side and this dot is on the other side right if i rotate a little bit like this right now it seems i'm having these two along one great circle right this one here if i follow this great circle that's also on that plane so let's trace this one all right so you see these two apparent dips are located on this plane so if i read this strike and the dip of this plane then we are done i'm gonna do in two different uh, conventional rules i'm gonna do first with the uh, with the quadrant convention so here we have north 10 20 30 40 50 60 65 so north 65 west and is dipping towards southwest right uh, let's write it there and let's place the, the plane along the great circle then we are able to count the dip the angle is 10 20 30 right so you just write here 30 degrees so this is the uh, solution but either you can write this or if you want to do it in a right hand rule okay i think it might be easier uh, for the future problems um, what you do you put four fingers okay um, towards the deep direction right that way let me i rotate this just to show you you know uh, easily um, so four fingers parallel with the dip direction and this end is the one that you should actually read if you are going to give the numbers in the right hand rule so i want to give this so this is 90 100 110 115 okay if you write 115 is slash 30 then you are done with this problem thank you